Hello, Murali. Good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning, Said. How are you doing? Awesome. So excited to talk to you to discuss some important questions that a lot of people want to avoid discussing. Questions people rather leave under the carpet. So right. happy to help. <laughs> yeah, I think this will be a very interesting discussion. Yeah. Sure, like based on what my perspective is, I can give you some answers. It cannot be uh, really true for everyone, but you know, it might help. Yep, yep, yes. But it's an experience that's based on a lot of years experience, a lot of interviews, a lot of times being interviewed yourself. So it's a rich experience that you're sharing. You will be sharing with us. Probability of what I'm gonna answer may be relevant. That's what you are trying to say. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. So, uh, before we go on, please remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel. There will be a lot of interesting discussions, uh, interviews showing up, people like Murali and others sharing their opinions. This is, uh, I, really, I really appreciate your subscribes, uh, likes, comments. Thank you so much. All right, Murali, so tell us about your Salesforce experience so that people have context of who you are. All right, so I'm a senior Salesforce architect uh, right now. I have like 16 years in IT consulting and 12 years of uh, as a senior Salesforce consultant with proven accomplishments in uh, estimation, designing solutions, writing uh, functional specs, technical design documents and for end-to-end -end Salesforce implementations. Um, so I have experience in sales service, community cloud, data migration, API integrations, automation, release management, uh, installing and configuring App Exchange products, setting up sharing and security reports and dashboards, complex workflow rules and approval processes. Um, uh, so, so there are like so many things that I can uh, go on talking about. But you know, uh, the the main thing which uh, which I want to talk about is you know, my uh, my responsibility is to set the Salesforce standards and best practices, uh, which aligns with uh, the company's goals, uh, also with other applications that we have uh, in our. Uh, company or any other organization so uh, so much money and effort is uh, you know saved in f future so we have to make it like in a best possible way so it can be developed on top of it so that's my job uh, you know um, put it, to put it short like I, I implement salesforce in the best possible way uh, and then uh, using the best features that is available that's pretty much great uh, how many years of salesforce experience you have I have like 12 years of uh, Salesforce experience. I had like four plus years of uh, Java J2E experience before that. That made awesome. my Salesforce experience easier. Awesome. And how many years have you been interviewing candidates now in the US? Uh, I should say um, maybe close to 10 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And how many candidates have you interviewed over the 10 years, would you estimate? I would say at least 100 candidates. Uh, not too much for 10 years, but yes, uh, and I, 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 mean, I wouldn't be interviewing every time, but there is a need when there's a need for our company, like I used to interview. And you do the technical interviews, right? I do the technical interviews. Uh, uh, recently, more recently, I also look at, uh, uh, you know, the behavior skills, what they have, and, you know, uh, the, 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 the way how they approach a particular solution, you know, a, a in a different way. Uh, it's not just purely technical. Uh, I just want, uh, I just look at the approach uh, that they are, uh, you know, following in uh, more than what technical skills they have. Mm -hmm. Great. So you've interviewed about 100 people over the last 10 years and you interviewed them for the Salesforce developer roles? Salesforce developers, admins, BAs, architects. Okay. Great. And you yourself also have been interviewing with other places probably. And how many interviews do you estimate you have done yourself? Um, by myself, I would say, I mean, all those hundred interviews, I, I would just- No, no, I mean, it. how many times you've been interviewed? Oh, myself, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I got it. Uh, I didn't job, uh, change jobs much, so I would say uh, less than 10, I was interviewed. I, I, I'm not, uh, and I, I wouldn't be looking for more jobs when because I, I'm happy with uh, you know all the places that I worked at. I would sometimes attend the interviews just to know what other challenges what what the what the other companies have. 
so that you know that will give me more perspective more uh, perspective on what's happening outside so not necessarily like i'm going to going for an interview just to get a new job just that i want to know what's out there what they're looking for with sales yeah what's the market demand for uh, market demand is like too huge right now uh, uh, yeah no, are, i meant i meant to say you go out to interview just to see how you compare to the market demand if you if you're competitive uh, right yes uh, if i am still comp- competitive and yeah. uh, also uh, you know what other what what other companies are looking for in a sales force yeah. that i can use in my company right mm. mm-hmm. great great so just for a background yeah we see that murad has interviewed many people he himself has also been on the other side being interviewed so i think he has good perspective into the interview evaluation process now next set of questions about 10 of them i would like to these are blitz questions i would like you morale to share your opinion on them okay. at most within two sentences okay sure. i'll try my best okay these are questions a lot of people typically don't don't ask and i would love to hear your opinion on them before you interview a candidate do you look at their linkedin profile or google their name yes uh, i do that sometimes just for me to be sure that that candidate has a real experience um, i mean in my experience i had got like so many candidates who don't have the right experience but just, just they just put it on the resume but i think with linkedin uh, i can just have more perspective like if it is a real experience uh, you know i don't want to waste my time on something which uh, is you know going to be a waste of time for, for me right so if they have a nice linkedin profile that's a plus for the candidate it's uh yeah so more uh, um, highlighting more on what they worked on uh, not just look uh, listing down the tech uh, the the tools and te- uh, technology that they worked on but what they use the technology for mm-hmm. uh, they, they they can list in their experience like in a year you know they might have two or three things that they w- would want to highlight uh, so those things that you know it gives a summary of the uh, you know candidate and then also gives us uh, an information on what we are we we require is matching with what they have in their linkedin profile so yes i i look at them sometimes just yes got it what if a candidate has no linkedin profile that would that raise a red flag for you um uh, i i mean i i don't know like i can i can look at the resume too and uh, uh have a sense like salesforce is, uh, for me like salesforce has been a small world so if they put some experience in it i know which companies are using salesforce nowadays it's every every uh, company is using it but i want to understand i can look at the resume and see that what they have used for and uh, sometimes i find that okay i had worked there as well and i had like i was a consultant like i had worked on different with different companies for a short period of time so i get an idea so linkedin no linkedin is basically a red flag uh, but you never know yeah uh, you, you better have it right <laughs> You better have it, right? Yeah. What if a candidate has a like a Hotmail or AOL email account? That would that also make you wonder? Are they on old technology? Are they not innovative? Oh no, I mean, it's their personal choice. Why I would want don't want I don't want to judge on based on that <laughs> uh, because they they want to stick to what they started with. So it's fine. Got it. When you doing a background check on the candidate and you find that they have created some salesforce content such as youtube videos linkedin posts or maybe they even have a personal blog like forcepanda.com what impression does that give you okay so it it is it is good to have blogs uh, talking about certain things uh, which is so- solving a certain problem uh, it's, it's a common problem and people can look at it and it, it 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 gives a perspective that you know they are ready to share what they have learned uh personally i don't have time to look at the videos and uh the blogs that they have written but you know if they bring it up i i would be interested to go and look at it um because you know uh, considering the the job i do i it's it's very uh, difficult if i if there are like 100 and 15 resumes i get i cannot go and look at everyone's linkedin profiles thoroughly and then i cannot look at everyone's youtube and blogs that they have done but if they have they are highlighting it maybe i will go and look at it 
do you look at the Git, at the candidates GitHub profile? Um, I I don't basically. <laughs> it's it's I, again an added thing, right? Like yeah, it, it's it it gives an idea about how much you are contributing, right? Um, no, I don't I don't I don't personally look at those. I just get all my answers from the questions I I ask them. Got it. But people recommend adding your GitHub profile to the to the resume. So uh, even if you don't look at it, but if you see it mentioned there, that's something possibly a plus for you, right? Yes. If the, uh, yeah. So GitHub having an experience uh, working with GitHub itself as a added uh, yeah uh, added um, advantage because uh, nowadays uh, you know with Salesforce we are looking uh, how to in integrate with GitHub and have this. Um, uh, code versioning review done like which we cannot do it in Salesforce right now that you know natively so yeah it's it's, a, it's an added advantage uh, I would look at that perspective rather than their GitHub profile mm. like whether they have experience working with GitHub yeah Got it. do you recommend candidates have traditional resume or a more colorful one maybe they add a photo some kind of design what's your preference uh, photo is good. I, I like uh, I like something which is very simple. Uh, but having a photo is good. I know uh, gives me uh, you know like like gives me a person who I can refer as. Okay, this is the person, and then these are the details. Uh, colorful. Uh, I, I don't want the resume to be clogged with all this uh, something which is more colorful. I want uh, whatever the job description is that you are applying for. I want the the resume to uh, have those listed down that you know. Okay, I have this. Uh, whatever you need, I have this experience, and uh, and then also whatever you had worked on, which is an added advantage. So more specifically, what I look for is in a, in a resume is something which is more relevant to our job requirement. But in terms of the resume design for Salesforce developer role, do you think it's better for Canada to have a traditional resume or a more like uh, interesting uh, resume that typically people in the web design? Uh, yeah, if you prefer. if you're making it funnier and uh, more uh, uh, catchy for others, you know, if you are we want to show like that you are different from everyone else, you you, you could do that. Yeah, but ultimately, uh, it all depends on how you are going to do your interview, right? Got it, got it. I was thinking if you make a more colorful, interesting resume, can interviewers might think why are you investing your time in making the resume. Yes. Uh, nice. Uh, instead, you should just focus on the skills, and uh, let's go with the traditional it, resume. Yeah, it depends on uh, what they worked on before, right? Like, if they worked on really interesting job, like where they had to uh, do some creative work. Uh, you know, if they, they 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 like creative work, like it it can be creative. Uh, the resume can be creative. I'm not saying that it doesn't have to be creative, but just that I don't want uh, irrelevant things to show up. The more I, 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 I okay, you, the, your experience also should be highlighted more, uh, and then in a some in a in a, in a simpler uh, traditional form. Uh, I, I I like the photos. Uh, I like the funny uh, or you know creative things that they put. I don't have any. Uh, I don't see any differences in that. I don't also judge because they okay they had spent so much time on writing creating the resume. Mm. I just think that they are more structural in doing things, right? Like if if you are doing something in a very structural way. You have, if you're putting time and effort on your resume, which basically means that uh, you are going to do the job in a structural way. Uh, traditional is good, um, creative is better. Really interesting, interesting perspective. Next question. During the interview, you notice that the candidate has a nice camera, has set up nice audio, maybe headphones or a stand up mic. And they even have some, have some Salesforce decorations in the background. What like impression what does it like? Like I don't have Salesforce decorations, but let's say they have Salesforce stickers, maybe that badger, uh, uh -huh. that toy yeah, would... on the side. Does that give you like, oh, this guy's a professional. He has prepared well. He's passionate about Salesforce, and that gives them a plus. Yes, uh, uh, it could. Yeah, I want the video to be. Crisp, crisp, clear. I want uh, the the voice to be clear, because I don't want to assume what they're saying. Based on that, I cannot make a decision. Mm. So I want every, the, the they have to solve all the technical problems that they have. They cannot tell me that okay, I I don't I have a bad problem. I, I cannot switch on my video. I don't want to listen to all this. Um, you know, I don't want to say anything 
bad image in a video but uh, so uh, that's one thing and then if you have a, a background which is like you know, again, creative, right? Uh, we can talk about that. Hey, what is that? Uh, you know, to relieve the inter interview uh, interviewer and also interviewee, and uh, you know, in a way that they can, you know, diverge from what they were they are asking, and then both uh, don't have to be nervous about what they are going to ask, and then they can talk a little bit personal as well. You know, a person. You know, most of uh, most of time, what I'm look, looking for is also a person who is is fun to work with, right? Uh, you cannot. You, you can be serious, but still, you know, you, if if there is a uh, you know something fun to talk about, uh, it gives uh, you know a better uh, rapport uh, when you work with them, uh, and also it it also uh, uh, gives relieves the you know the person who's being interviewed, uh, uh, and he can talk about other things and then get back to the uh, the list of questions, uh, so so that they are not nervous. Sometimes people are nervous and they don't talk about. Uh, what they are worked on, even when, when they they know what they uh, what we are asking for, uh, you know they cannot say it because they are nervous. So this these things uh, maybe relieve uh, them from these uh, nervousness and also uh, diverge in different ways to understand the personality of the person as well. Great. So let's say the interview went well. Should the candidate follow up with you after the interview? Okay, I I don't personally like someone following up after the interview. Whatever uh, you want to convey, you know, may, I give uh, five minutes uh, to the candidate to ask certain questions, right? Uh, based on what we discussed, uh, they can talk about it. They can talk about the role, uh, what uh, you know we are expecting, uh, everything uh, during that time, and then whatever they want to convey, they can convey at that same time. And I mean, I I'm I'm just interviewing, and then. There are other things that there might be other levels. So I give my evaluation, and uh, uh, and then someone else adds something more on top of it, top of it, based on what they are looking for in the in the job role. So uh, I don't personally like someone following up. Uh, maybe you you follow it up in the same conversation, right? So it's it's a personal cho choice. I would say. I mean, I don't like it because what if the, uh, you know he doesn't get selected? Uh, you know, it, it puts both of us in a bad state. Like, what I'm going to respond? <laughs> so, if I'm the candidate, you the interviewer, should I connect with you on LinkedIn after the interview with a nice note? What have, do you think about it if I do that? I've seen people uh, connecting with me before, even before the interview. Uh, maybe they want to understand. Uh, you know, I mean, that's that's okay. I mean, I don't have any, uh, you know, any op opinions about that. Um, but I would keep it uh, not connected. I won't accept unless you know we are sure you know that we are going ahead with the candidate. Uh, it's it's because you know I don't want to have like so many connections. Um, I want value uh, in my connections that I have. Like tomorrow, someone looks at my profile. I don't want to find. Uh, I want them. I don't want them to find that there is a list of recru recruiters in my uh, you know connections. Instead, I, I if I have if I'm connecting with a good set of people that, are, that have a professional experience with me. Uh, it gives a relevance, uh, more more uh, relevance instead of me connecting with everyone I interview. I don't talk to them after that. Doesn't make any sense, but it, it's their personal choice. They can do it. I'm not going to accept it. One, one word answer. Should I connect to the interview or not? Your recommendation. Uh, you, you can connect. You can connect? <laughs> Yeah, but but you the you the you the interview. What do you think if they do you think like this guy is being bossy or pushy? Uh, maybe he should like cool down. Hey, uh, you you see you can connect. Uh, maybe you want to understand about the interviewer, uh, how what is his experience, uh, everything, uh, so that you have a better idea of what you're de dealing with. Uh, you can do that. Uh, I'm not going to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mostly Last everything. Question. Everything, uh, you know, maybe I don't like it because, you know, I have a lot of people to interview and not everyone is a quali quality candidate. So that's, that's, that's my problem. <laughs> but you won't accept it. <laughs> I won't accept it as long as it is a you know, value, valued candidate. Uh, I, there are like so many fake profiles going around. I don't want to have them as my connections. So if, if they think they're a good candidate, and they are they think they have a good chance in getting the job maybe then you will accept right yes great after the interview after yes. the interview 
last question in our set of blitz questions. Do you recommend candidates do informational interviews at the companies that they are interviewing for? So I would uh, suggest uh, the candidates to talk to the recruiter what they want, uh, what they want this, what is this requirement for, what they want uh, from you know the candidate, and uh, how they are using Salesforce, right? So that some that information, if you ask the recruiter, that will give more idea about uh, what are the specific questions that we are looking for, right? So. So, the, uh, so even if uh, we want the candidate to know every, everything, that's what you know all the companies need. I mean, I don't personally look at everything, but I just look at what specific things that we are looking for, whether the candidate can fulfill it. So the candidate has to reach out to the recruiter and find out what they are using Salesforce for, what this requirement is for, so that they are clear uh, even before coming to the interview. And that's like a one crack that they have at the interview, right? Because they know what we are looking for, so they can prepare for what we are looking mm. for. You don't recommend doing informational interviews? Like a lot of uh, a lot of people recommend doing informational interviews at the companies that they are interviewing at. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm recommending it, so you can do. But like, you do, you're recommending it like with the HR. But what I'm saying is, like, mm -hmm. if I know you're a Salesforce developer, you're interviewing me. You, or you're the technical architect, you're interviewing me, I go out and reach out to the other Salesforce developers on your team and, and talk to them and learn about the company, about the use of Salesforce. Yes, uh, you could do that. Uh, so, so basically you want to know what we are using Salesforce for. I mean, see, you can also request a recruiter to ask if they can have a you know, pre-interview, like talk to a person who is, needs this requirement for technically so that you no, know, I want to understand what they want. So you can ask that. Uh, to the you know recruiter, so they can provide you either they get the information and then give it to you, or they will set up some time to, with the manager who needs it, so that they give you an idea, and then they can set up a follow-up technical interview after that. So yes, it's it's good to do that uh, because it it gives more insight on what you will be asked, and if if you think that that is not something which you can do, you can you know you, it's the best use of both everyone's time. You don't need it, need the job because you cannot do it or you don't like doing it. So that's that's my perception. Interesting, interesting. Okay, all right, that's it for the blitz questions. Mm -hmm. Apologies to our interviewers, that's uh, to our to our viewers that some some answers were longer, but I think those were complete answers to the questions. All right, yeah. now let's discuss, let's go to the next set of questions. These are questions that people avoid discussing. People hush hush about it, but we will tackle them right now with Morali. When you evaluate candidates, what mm -hmm. role do certificates play in your evaluation? Uh, it, it plays a role as long as it is more than a basic admin or developer certification. So anyone mm. can do that. So. I'm, if you have a, uh, you know, certification that is like a developer two, right? Uh, and then app developer, and then more sophisticated like the community cloud consultant, uh, and then the architect certifications that they have, like for every there are like seven or eight uh, architect certifications that you do so that you can be an application architect, system architect. So those higher level certifications. Uh, you know, I, that doesn't mean anything, but just that it is not just the basic developer and admin that everyone has it. Even people just get trained for one, one or two months and they can have that. Uh, I'm not looking for those basic certifications. The, 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 the one certification I would be looking for is the developer two certification because uh, that uh, you, you, you actually do some exercise after passing, you have to do some exercise and then you know, they evaluate and tell you like whether you passed it or not. So it's not just a, a you know, a multiple choice question. It's a exercise that you do, uh, which is evaluated by Salesforce. So uh, I'm, I will be looking for that. Got it. What should a candidate say if they don't know something? Uh, is it, do you think it's okay to say, I don't know, but here's how I would figure it out? Uh, yeah, I mean, no is the is a, is, a, is the right answer, <laughs> I would say. 
so not everyone knows everything uh, so if you try to answer everything even if you don't know that means that uh, I mean, that doesn't i don't know what it means but that doesn't give a right impression because then you take certain things from us uh, after you were like in the job and then you say uh, yes to everything basically you don't know uh, or maybe you can uh, figure it out that's different but uh, it's it's always better uh, to tell like when you don't know something next question how much can you exaggerate your developer skills hey. <laughs> Yeah, you can exaggerate a lot as long as you are able to answer that exaggeration, right? Um, so, uh, to give an example, uh, if you say that you worked on certain things, I, I, I would be more interested to know what I don't know, right? So, uh, sometimes I ask more about it, uh, and then if they are not able to answer that, then they are caught right away. You, you, you be honest on what you are doing, but you can be honest and do say the same things what you worked on in a better way rather than exaggerating what you did not work on so just exaggerate what you worked on mm. more polished way i not i i would not call it as exaggeration like polish on what you worked on so you said that to don't exaggerate skills you don't have but present the skills you do have in a more polished way yes what's a good way to present your skills in a polished way um it should be uh, like if you worked on a challenging uh, thing in salesforce uh you, you might have a simple solution to it right but you can polish it in a way that that even if it was a very small uh, thing that you worked on how much impact it did for the business for the overall company uh, so and also, um, you, it was challenging uh, until you went ahead and fixed it, right? Uh, so yeah, that's I call it as polished way. Rather than you worked on so many Apex classes, triggers, and uh, you know, in a project, and it just did not mean anything. Do you recommend candidates present their answers in a star format, like situation, task, action, result? Yes, uh, that would uh, be better. Yeah. Uh, it so I have seen people answering that you know I worked on it rigor which was complex, uh, but instead if they said uh, why it was complex and you know they start with the problem why you needed a trigger for that and how it uh, you know get co got complicated and how you solved it uh, and then what was the results yes uh, the situation starting from the situation is, is a good good way a good approach great great it gives you context right of what are they tackling? Why? Yes. The problem I have with all the candidates is they don't have, they don't give me any context. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Now, our last set of questions. Uh, where we want, I want to discuss the interview process. Mm -hmm. When you're interviewing a candidate, is there a specific question that you're seeking an answer for? Like, mm -hmm. is this guy smart or is this guy quick learner or is this guy uh, really like is there a specific questions that you're trying to answer um i i would keep it open sometimes uh i don't have a specific answer but i want to know like i have a specific answer for myself but uh if they have a better answer than that no, i mean do you, have a, do you have a specific question you, you're seeking an answer mm -hmm. for as you're talking to the candidate yes so basically, I my all my questions are always seeking answers from what they have answered before. So uh, they said something, and I just dig deeper into it. Uh, so to know that if whatever experience that uh, the the you know, the person is talking about is what they actually worked on. So sometimes they just say it, and then they they cannot dig further into it because they didn't work on it. Maybe they were part of a team. Uh, his his part was a smaller smaller thing in it, uh, but. Uh, you know, they say that they did everything. So I want to dig deeper to see uh, see whether they did everything or they did only a part of it. I want to, I ask them th these questions. So whether, are you part of a team or did they get to that later on? No, no, I was like part of uh, a bigger team. So I worked on only this part, but they, they tell that the whole thing is that, that they worked on, which 
uh, you know, it's just not a honest way, uh, but they can just directly say that I worked on a bigger project and this is my module. I know what happened uh, because I was working with other teams, but this is the module that I worked on. Start from there. And that would be, a, that, that would be something which I will be looking at, uh, something which is honest about what they worked on. As you interview the candidates, like overall from the interview, what's the goal of interview? What question are you seeking to answer? Okay. So the goal of the interview is what, what requirements I have, right? So that's what we discussed before. You, you talk to the recruiter, or find out what... Mm, I see. So my uh, questions are based on what we need. Mm. For example, we need DevOps, so, uh, someone who's working on DevOps, uh, because we are struggling with it. And, mm. uh, we don't want to teach them like when they come in. So if they know about it, it's, it makes our job easier. So. I'm looking for someone who worked on certain things which we need and not everything in Salesforce. Mm -hmm. so that's the specific things that we are asking for. Got it. So if ahead of the interview, I talked to the HR and I found that I find out that you guys are interesting in some in candidates who have experience with community cloud, uh, with uh, like Jenkins. Then I prior to the interview, I can prepare nice scenario answers about my community cloud Jenkins experience and I highlight this experience during the interview, that would be for you a big plus. Yes, and uh, if you look at the requirements, that's basically what we are looking for as well. In the job description, you can read that, you can make your resume as close to that and make and prepare for it. So we will be looking for only those requirements that we have. Some, some, some people have a generic uh, job description where they put everything. Exactly. But, but you know, we, are, we, are, we will highlight the specific skills on the top maybe everything else at the bottom. I see, I see. So you, you guys prepare good job descriptions, but I think a lot of companies, they just copy paste generic developer job description. So it's hard to figure out what problem are they trying to figure out with the developer. Yes. All right, good. So make sure candidates, you, you guys find out what are the specific problems that the development team is trying to figure out and prepare for that for those requirements prior to the interview and highlight how you can help the company resolve those problems. Yes, and yeah, you come with a solution, that would be great. Uh, it doesn't mean that you, you are having a crack at what we are going to ask, but even if you look at the job requirements, we are going to uh, dig deeper into it if you are saying that you worked on something, so be prepared for that. <laughs> what are the top three ways that candidates blow an interview? For example, do they start talking about pay time off, salary, start date, or some other weird things that you typically don't expect in a technical interview? Yes, uh, the, they blow up uh, sometimes. Uh, because there are like so many different <laughs> things that they blow up the interview. Uh, yeah, so one thing which we already discussed is if you know don't know something, you just say no to it. Okay, good, one. Right, and then the second thing is you don't give a context on uh, what you were uh, like a challenging problem that we ask, and you say no context, and you just work on complex figures. That's second thing. You give Good. us a context. Uh, third thing, uh, uh, I don't know about like asking salary questions. You you ask. Uh, okay, this is not something to blow up. Like, uh, so you can ask certain questions uh, that you you are not able to answer. Like uh, you show interest uh, in what, what it is like at the end of the interview, right? Like you can ask like when the interviewer is asking, uh, you know, what are the questions that you have at the end of the interview? You just make sure that you ask uh, certain things that we discussed about uh, and then certain questions that you asked. Can, you know, can I know why you asked that? Like, is there something that, what, what is your approach? Did I, you know, did I say something which is not relevant? Like, you can just get some feedback right away. Uh, not really real uh, feedback, like how did I do? No, just, uh, it, it, it just uh, tells that you want to learn what you did not know, mm -hmm. right? The third thing that you blow, blow up by, <laughs> just, uh, um, yeah, uh, something that you say that you worked on, but you did not, right? You touch on a topic, uh, which you say that you worked on and then you were not able to dig deeper into it, right? That's uh, a third thing. And there are many things that I can talk about, but these are the three things that I know uh, I, I can uh, collect, you know, recollect from my memory.
Mm-hmm. Maybe I can add later on when you ask other questions. <laughs> cool, cool, good, good. So you mentioned one thing that uh, I want to clarify with you. Do you think it's okay for a candidate to ask for feedback at the end of interview? No, no, it's not. Uh, you can, you can say, you can just ask what uh, the things that you didn't know. Like when uh, we were asking you something, you said no, and uh, maybe uh, certain things that you answered, you were not agreeing. The interviewer was not agreeing to it. Uh, maybe at the end of end of the interview, you can say that okay, fine. Like, uh, what is your take on it? Like, what, what mm, was that? I see, I see, I see. So for like, got it. So maybe uh, I answered this wrong, uh, you know, uh, because you disagree. Do you do you have any like anything that you can like I can learn from this, right? Yeah, if the interviewer knows about it, they can tell. And then I, sometimes the interviewer doesn't know what he's asking for. I've seen that. I have asked questions and uh, interviewer, oh no, you can go and Google it. So that means that the interviewer didn't know as well. Yes. What are the best ways to stand out in a technical interview? Um, I think the best three ways is the, 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 the worst three ways to blow up, right? Just avoid them? <laughs> Opposite, avoid them, yeah. Just, Just avoid them. <laughs> Just avoid them. Like talk about what you knew uh, that's, and then talk with context. Uh, Look at that. Okay. <laughs> ask ask re- relevant questions. Okay. And uh, always know that you know whatever you are answering may not be the the answer that they are expecting for. Uh, that's okay. Uh, you know maybe they 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 get to learn something from you. You know uh, uh, the best uh, one more uh, I can add to it is talk about features that are very uh, recent mm-hmm. and that you worked on. Uh, maybe yeah. the interviewer doesn't know it. I think I I think I we spoke about it before. So yeah. Uh, get to know the feature which is very recent in the market and do some exercise on it do, do some research on it and uh, say that okay this this is something which is very good and then uh, uh, that might be something very really interesting for the you know you know interviewer because they can re- readily use something which they learn from the interview so and also gives a perspective that you are you know bringing more knowledge to the team so you know you give some knowledge to the interviewer as well by learning something really cool and that's that's my question. Great. What's the best way for a candidate to prepare for a technical interview? So one of the things you mentioned is talk to the HR person to understand what's the bigger what's the big problem that the team is trying to resolve, right? So that's one thing they can do. What are some other things you would recommend for the technical interview? Uh, uh, yeah, from your past experience. Uh, whatever you have highlighted in the interview, uh, just uh, try to find something challenging from it and uh, try to talk about it. Uh, mm. So those challenging things, how we were able to solve it with context uh, and then make sure that context is the same as what we are looking for as, for as well in the requirement. Mm-hmm. So, okay, you, you, you're saying that, okay, I know that your company has this problem. So this is how we solved it in our company and in my previous experience. Uh, okay, that you know, that is what we are going to solve. And then you just come and do it here. So we'll just right away hire you. <laughs> so yeah, that's the cool. best way. You know, not learning about what are the typical interview questions. I mean, obviously you have to know about the basics of Salesforce, right? If you don't know the basics of so like uh, prepare about the uh, out of box configurations, uh, everything about the workflow rules, what all actions you can do, what is the difference between process building and workflow rules. Uh, and what, what, between process builders and triggers, and then all the three, uh, why we, we go for a bad job, why we go for a trigger, what are the different contexts? So these are like basics, right? If you don't know that, you, you don't know how to know the format of it, but at least know the basics of it, because when you know the basics, you can do anything uh, on top of it, right? So if you don't know it, then you go readily and do some coding instead. So you have to know the out of box configurations. Also the sharing and security model, which is very important. Uh, so yeah. Learn, learn the basics so sometimes we'll get to it because we need to know like not like every options what a workflow rule can do or anything but we will ask you in a scenario like why would you go for a workflow rule? why would you go for a process builder so prepare in that perspective right okay there's like four levels of security model i mean uh, share with uh, augur defaults and then you start adding profiles and then 
you know, sh sharing rules and, and then rules like there are like four, four, uh, four different ways and then manual sharing. So there are like different ways of how you can open up security. So you get to know that because that's very important as well. In a technical interview, should candidates discuss HR questions such, such as salary expectations, start date? No, uh, we are not sure that you are going to be hired. So why you ask that question? Good. All right. How important are communication skills in a technical interview? I think it is very important. Uh, so if you're not able to convey what we are looking for, then definitely like, even if you have the knowledge, we might not hire you because you were not able to explain to explain it to us. But the communication skill is maybe you can be slow. You can be uh, more clear about what you're talking about. Uh, you know, it's not a problem that you have a communication problem, just that you, you just have to communicate what you want to say in a more mm -hmm. clear way. Yeah, that's important. Great. In, from a behavioral aspect in a technical interview, what are you looking for? You, you mentioned earlier that you're looking for a person who is nice. Uh, how do you evaluate if a person is nice, if you uh, want to work with them? Yeah, sometimes some, someone who is uh, open to, uh, you know, criticism, right? So open to uh, new ideas, uh, you know, it's, you know, not every, you know, sometimes like I get reviews from people that, you know, sometimes if I do it, something wrong, uh, that's an opportunity to learn. Uh, and then I use that so that I don't do that, repeat that in the, in the future. So uh, you should not be taking it personally. And it, so everything is, uh, you know, like a way to learn. So I'm looking for a behavior which is open to criticism, open to new ideas, and uh, also open to learn if they don't know. Like it's not knowing something is not a bad, so uh, you, you can learn. So that kind of attitude, uh, like that one example is when you ask the interviewer at the end, like what what is that that, you know, like I couldn't answer it, but you know, what is that? What is your take on it? Like to know the, their perspective so that you learn from it. Like you can just tell them, okay, I, I just want to learn like, because this, I didn't know. So uh, it's not like, you know, go and Google it question, but there's something which is, you know, very difficult to figure out, but that you, you're just asking the interviewer to answer it. Uh, that gives a, you know, a better understanding about the candidate that he's also willing to learn uh, from his mistakes. How important is candidates' familiarity with DevOps tools? Yeah, nowadays uh, it is very uh, important. Uh, Salesforce uh, was always like out of IT, like it used to be a separate entity before in every company. They can do deployments anytime they want and then they can make changes in production. Like more features, more powerful, uh, power, Salesforce is more powerful. They can just make anything like right away. Uh, we don't know how to go through all this deployment process. So now, uh, like all the companies, uh, now they are uh, setting up standards, which is like what they're following with other uh, applications within uh, their company. They want Salesforce also to follow that. Salesforce doesn't have you know, certain like code versioning, uh, the, the review, how they manage the package and send it to the next the other environment, right? Uh, so, so, we, so there are certain tools that we use, like GitHub, uh, Jenkins, uh, you know, like there are like tools like Copado, Flowzone. So, uh, it it just uh, you know has a, a set of standards where we you know we promote from one uh, uh, one org to the other org uh, by following certain set of standards. Like we have to review it, we have to do some uh, approval, and then we have to review. And then if you give the, some comments, they have to go and update it. Uh, so that everything should be automated, and uh, so that you know everyone gets a, a visibility on what's like going into production and then how it got reviewed and what are the tests that you know ran after that and nothing failed before it goes to production so uh, devops tool is very important uh, if you if you know that that's that's something which every every company is looking for so just get familiar familiarized with uh, you no know, salesforce dx the tools that they have out of box uh, not out of box the, the tools that they provide for you to you know work with um, uh, for the change management, release management, code versioning, uh, yeah. 
so familiar with the of source is important. Which ones would you recommend? Salesforce DX? Uh, I, I would recommend uh, Jenkins. whatever they used. Uh, there are like different tools, right? GitHub and Jenkins, like if you know that, that's, that's also good. Uh, someone does everything totally within Copado or Flosum, right? They don't have to use version management or anything, but that happens within uh, the Salesforce native uh, tool itself, uh, App Exchange product, right? So, but uh, it's good to have, like, because other applications don't use that, right? So, so, so other, other the company wide, uh, like the IT team follows a different approach, like GitHub and Jenkins, and we are following something different tool, right? So it is better to have the same, uh, um, you know, DevOps tools uh, that other applications are using, uh, so that we we can sell it everywhere, right? Uh, not just specific to Salesforce, but just that you know, it is it works with other uh, DevOps tools. Great. So, you, you, like, let's say I'm a new Salesforce developer, but in my company, we don't use these DevOps tools. So it would be good if I just go out and explore and um, yeah, find there, a way to become familiar with it, right? It would make me a better candidate. Right, so many companies, they have this GitHub Enterprise. It's just only within Enterprise, it's not the free GitHub account that you have, because the code uh, which is within the company cannot be shared, like it cannot be in public right, space, right? So this we have GitHub Enterprise, um, only specific people have access to that code. So it's the same as GitHub, but you know there are certain web hooks that they we can do it through like uh, you know GitHub and then the Salesforce tools like Gear Set. Uh, that's what we use. Uh, yeah, if you if you worked on any DevOps tool, it's going to be the sim similar everywhere else. So, mm, so it is the same set of processes that you follow. So having an experience in DevOps tool is good enough as a specific tool. Got it. Cool. Thank you very much, Morale. You answered all my questions. Did I pass? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it will depend on your follow-up right, message. So if you write a good message for me, I will. Okay. I might uh, consider oh, you. You asked me so many questions. Like, are you not going to ask me? Like, uh, do I have any questions for you? <laughs> yes, I actually had a question. So, we talked a lot about about. Uh, things candidates should do, things candidates should avoid. If there was one piece of advice that you want candidates to take away from our conversation that they should do to do well on interview, what would it be? I think I'll be repeating me over and over on this. <laughs> yes, good things have to be repeated. So what's the one thing you would want candidates to take away? All right, so one thing, uh, I would say, uh, you know, uh, the context on what they are talking about mm -hmm. uh, is very important um, with what requirement that you are being interviewed mm -hmm. for. Say the context of what is it, it should be similar to what we need. And then that's something which uh, is readily uh, in a positive uh, you know, point on you. So that's one takeaway. Good. Yeah, guys, write out your star scenarios, all right? Three, four scenarios. Uh, practice them. Uh, get feedback. And your scenarios will help you stand out in an interview. Yes. Yeah, and also, you know, the comedians, then they, you know, they have a list of things they have written themselves sometimes to answer, you know, from the audience or what they should ask the audience and what or the responses they might give and based on which, how they have to respond to it. Even the comedians have a set of rules. They don't, they don't, they just don't get everything in the flow. Everyone has to prepare. So yeah, yeah. yeah. better to prepare. Better prepare. Yeah, even Obama prepares, Steve Jobs prepares. So candidates, yeah. you guys should definitely prepare and practice ahead. Yeah, as an interviewer, I also prepare, so. <laughs> oh really? So tell me actually, how do you prepare as a, as a interviewer? What, what do you do? Do you just go to Google and say, what are interview questions and just go down through the uh, top interview no. question sets? No, it's basically the, what I said, what I need, I, I just write it down like, okay, DevOps experience, uh, you know, mm. as, a, as a behavior wise, what's like, ask a scenario based on what they answer. So what are their answers for that? I just record it down. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just 
match that with other candidates i ask the same sort of questions for mm. for everyone but sometimes it is more because based on what they answer there is more as well uh, so so i just have a you know table and then all the questions that i have what all they have what all they have answered so that you know i don't have to think about it what i have to ask again right because already i answered everything so i have a list of questions myself how long do you prepare uh, preparing for an interview and how do you how long do you pre- do you look at the resume uh mostly i don't look at the resume that much <laughs> uh, <laughs> because it's too too huge and you know if it is a, a simple or it is and relevant it is good but you know most of them are not uh, so i i would basically go with my requirement okay this is my requirement uh, i see you are able to satisfy everything from your answers that's pretty much i want uh, uh resume, you know i don't want to find out okay you, you mentioned this mentioned this and why i would ask questions on that that's not my way i just don't want people to know everything i just want people to know what i want right in my job right i see i see so your requirements and you see if a candidate can meet those requirements and then everything else they can figure it out after that okay. cool thank you very much murali very interesting yeah thank you thanks for talking to you so i can also refresh what i was looking for in people <laughs> all right you. enjoy the rest of your weekend bye bye thank you thank you bye